All right, men, let's talk about targets. Now, I guess I didn't realize until recently what an important part of shooting and being a good shooter targets are. I guess because uh, my job now, if you don't know, I manage a firearms and training company. And you see people and they spend all these money on these nice guns and nice equipment and they just come in and the target is kind of an afterthought. Like, oh, I'm just going to pick whatever random target strikes my fancy today. And I look at that and I have to wonder, you know, if that has to be pretty prevalent, if I'm seeing that all the time. I guess I never thought about it because, you know, I started competition shooting when I was, you know, still in school and we had a set target. And when I was a police officer, we usually, especially for quals, we had a set target. When I went to a professional training school, whichever one it would be, they had their set go-to target. And they may have other targets for different scenarios and hostage targets, but they had a set target that they trained standards on. When I train, I I have set targets that I train standards on. I'll get to what those are later. But your target should not be an afterthought. It shouldn't be that you go out and scrutinize and oh, well, this model is better than this model. Oh, but this brand X has this, and this aftermarket thing does this, and just willy-nilly go and grab whatever target. The only reason you have the gun in the first place is to hit a target. And I guess unless you're a collector, but this is gunfighter life. If you're a gunfighter, if you're a trainer, if you're a competition shooter, the reason that gun exists for you is to hit a target if needed. Correct? I mean, that's what it's for. So why would the target be an afterthought? The target should be a forethought. You should have a set standard as to, I want to be able to hit X amount of shots in a row at this size target at this distance and how would you even know if the gun you got was better or worse than the gun that you had if you don't have a set standard you just say oh it feels better i hear that all the time and it really ticks me off if this gun feels better who cares how it feels you're not a woman you don't go based on your feelings who cares how it feels how does it shoot for you can you run a bill drill can you run a mozambique can you run an el presidente on the same target better or worse more or less accurate quicker or slower than with another gun that should be the gun that you have as it's presuming it's reliable i don't care how it feels i don't care how cool it looks there's nothing wrong with a good looking gun but if it doesn't shoot well for you what are you doing just you know you're just chasing guns like a dog chasing its tail I realize that may have just angered some of the audience if that's you, but, you know, repent. Repent means to change your mind. So think about that. Think about how you look at guns and how you look at targets. Targets should not be an afterthought. And you don't have to spend a bunch of money here. You don't have to go crazy with targets. I have pretty much two standard targets, well, I guess three, but two main ones that I train on. And that would be an 8-inch steel plate. My general go-to standard right now is you know 50 yards 8 inch steel plate which I consider a head plate 10 in a row at 50 yards standing unsupported with whatever pistol I'm using that's my accuracy standard I generally will try and get that if I'm shooting pistol that day before anything else likewise if I'm limited to a 25 meter range a 25 yard range I will use a B16 target, which is an NRA, you know, bullseye pistol target at 25 yards, made for 25 yards. And I will try and get sevens and above, which is a four inch circle thereabouts. And that four inch circle is at 25 should be about the same as the eight inch circle at 50. Now, If I'm doing quick draw and things like that, I like the USPSA, IDPA, they're pretty similar. I like that standard, especially because people know what you mean when you say A zone hit, 
you know, C zone hit. People generally know what you're talking about if they're in the tactical world, if they're in the know, if they shoot any competition. If you say that, if you say, you know, I want to be able to draw and get, you know, three rounds, you know, center mass in the C zone in, you know, two seconds, they will know what you're talking about. And since I do like to shoot competition, it is a good thing to practice on. It is a good man-sized target. It's an analog for a human torso. And they're easy to find pretty much wherever. Most, you know, legit gun shops will have those or a paper version of those. And again, that's the USPSA or IDPA targets. They're either the cardboard ones or the, or the paper analogs thereof. Likewise, that steel plate I have, and if I'm working on speed and balance and speed and accuracy, I'll move it to the minimum safe distance, and I will shoot it, trying to get a hit from the draw. And you could pretty much do all of this pistol work with an 8-inch steel plate and some kind of hanger. I carry it in you know, the back of my Hummer with an, an old STI soft case, which is pretty robust. I throw it in there with some chains and some hooks. Now, where I'm going, usually there's something to set it up on because I'm bordering a two giant national forests and I work at a shooting range. So, but whatever that solution is for you, I also really like just the set, you know, steel bases where you get a two by four and you hang the target on it. You know, you can get a steel silhouette target, you can get whatever. But what I'm saying is have a standard and whatever that standard is for you. If you're a concealed carrier, say, you know, I want to be able to draw and get good hits on this steel silhouette. Uh, I'm just making this up, but say, I want to draw and get five hits on that target in less than three seconds, which is very doable. And I made that number up because we've been told that about 80% of handgun rounds are ineffective in stopping a target. So five rounds ought to do it. And they say most gunfights are over in less than three seconds. So I want to be able to do that. That's my standard. If that's your standard, fine. I would say have an accuracy standard to master the fundamentals before you go to your speed standard. Because that's what I do. And I, I, I probably should practice what I preach and preach what I practice. So have an accuracy standard. And again, this doesn't have to be complicated either. You know, you can do the ragged hole drill either on paper or on steel. You can shoot one shot. And then try and get all your other shots into that same hole. Make one big ragged hole at let's say 7 yards or whatever the distance is for you. Start out at 3 yards. Or you do the same thing on steel. I want all those rounds to touch at the minimum safe distance for that steel. That's my accuracy standard. I would encourage you to back off to whatever your max distance is because... It is a little bit different shooting at distance and it does really make you focus on accuracy and the fundamentals. But irregardless, or I should say regardless, that's not a word. Regardless is the word. Regardless, have a set standard for yourself and have a set target for yourself. I don't care if it's a simple steel plate. I don't care if it's a paper plate. A paper plate is a fine target. It's about the size of a kill zone on a deer, on a human analog a paper plate a paper plate is a good good target and they're cheap and you can get them at walmart you can get them wherever but a good standard size paper plate you know if you get a paper plate and staple it on a two by four that's a good good training target it doesn't have to be expensive i'm just encouraging you to have a standard target that you train on you could get the normal size paper plates and the little teeny paper plates and that could be your body shots head shots And you could staple them on that same 2x4. Staple the bigger one on the bottom and the little one on top. And that'd be a fine training target. And that will be better than just going and picking out whatever random target. Now, I think random targets have their place. There's a time and a place to shoot different targets. Now, you may think that contradicts what I said, but it doesn't. I'm talking about training for a standard. So you know what's best for you and you know what technique is working for you. Or when you change your technique what is working and what isn't working, what gun is better, what gun is not better. But there's a time to train with other targets. There's a time to train with hostage targets. There's a time to train with smaller targets. There's, I think, a time to train for most people and just shoot the FBI qual and see what stages you're strong on and weak on, which would require an FBI silhouette target, what we call the bottle target. But for you, for your standard, for most of the time when you go to the range, are you just grabbing a gun and just kind of shooting at whatever target? That's that's plinking. That's for fun. 
And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. But that's not gunfighting training. That's not realistic training. Have a set standard for you. Have a set target, whatever your go-to is. And it can change over time. But in a given time period, like I said, I don't care if it's a paper plate. I don't care if it's a cheap 8-inch steel plate, which I think I saw at Walmart yesterday. I don't care what it is. Just pick one and test yourself, improve yourself, and test your equipment, improve your equipment. If you didn't listen to the last episode of Alpha Male Podcast, we literally talked about testing your equipment, and this goes ties in with that. But don't just go, you know, there are exceptions if you just want to go out with your buddies and shoot and have fun and be like, oh, the zombie target looks cool. You know, that's great. There's a time and a place to just shoot to have fun. Shooting is fun. But if you're talking about training, have that set target for you. And I don't care what it is, but have it for you and know what it is. You know, it's like going to the gym. I wouldn't just go to the gym and be like, oh, that exercise today looks fun. It's like, no, today is chest day. Today I'm working on chest. I know what weight I'm going to bench. I know what weight I'm going to attempt to bench. I know what my grip should be. Like Those things are analogous to shooting Targets are important and they are not, they should not be an afterthought, in my opinion. The tactical tip of the day. Before we get to it, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a review of the podcast. If you want to check out more Good Shepherd training and consider supporting on Patreon, that's all I'm going to say about that today. I'm trying to get an episode out before work for you guys. If you guys don't know, I you know I work a way more than forty hour a week job to pay the bills. This this podcast is not it. But if you want to support the podcast and help it grow and hopefully make it more of a focus and make and get be able to put more effort into it, consider supporting on Patreon. With that, the tactical tip of the day: I talked about those steel plates. I don't care if you get a four inch, you know, an eight inch, a silhouette. They make these adapters, and I'm not going to endorse any one brand, but they make adapters. I'm sure more than one company makes them that hang on an engineer stake. That's what we called them in the military, engineer stakes. Uh, You might call it just a fence post, like a T post. They're usually green with white on top. They're just a metal post that you use to make fences that you beat into the ground. They're generally easy to find at most hardware stores, you know, your Home Depots, your Lowe's. They're cheap and inexpensive, and if you shoot them, you throw them away once they're torn up and get another one. But they make these hangers out of hardened steel where you put those on the top of that stake, and then you just hang your steel plate on it. And you could get them tall. You can get them short. You can probably get them so they fit in the trunk of your car if you drive a car. And you got that, and you got your steel plate, and then you have your standard target. You know, you have your standard thing that you can always have with you. You have a cheap, you know, $1 white. Maybe it's still a dollar with inflation, who knows. But the cheap white spray paint and maybe some white and black spray paint if you want to put some different, you know, a finer aiming point on your target. But from Walmart for a dollar or two a piece. And then you've got a cheap, effective, inexpensive target that you can train on. And that will, except for the stake, if you shoot it, will probably get bent. Will last you pretty much forever if you take care of it and don't lose it. So there's a tactical tip of the day. Those engineer stake or or T-post metal target hangers. They're not expensive. The steel plates aren't expensive if you think of how long they last. Probably cheaper than shooting paper targets because once you buy it, like I said, unless you shoot it with some crazy caliber and tear it up or something, it's pretty much going to last you as long as you're around and don't lose it. With that, the tactical verse of the day. Deuteronomy 11. For the Lord your God is God of God and lords of lords. The great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bribe. It's also written in the law, you shall take no bribe. For a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Don't just trust whatever's on YouTube about guns and the next new hot gun and this and that. If somebody is bribed, if they're literally paid and given something to be told how awesome it is, then be skeptical of that. I'm not saying it's a bad gun, but I'm saying it's hard to find an impartial judge on things and the firearms world is no different. So be circumspect and consider these things. With that, men, thanks for listening to this episode of Gunfighter Life. Hope you enjoyed this short episode. Thanks and have a blessed day.